Hi, my name's Ian Wright, and this is a little short podcast about the Daisy Clinic Trust. And uh, the reason why I'm doing that is we're just about to have an open day at the Daisy Clinic on the 11th of September. And the clinic is going to be open for whoever wants to come and visit. Um, Between 12, 30 and 2, if you have any interest, there's going to be 12, possibly 14 osteopaths there including all of my staff who work at the Clomel Osteopaths. And we're there basically to answer questions about what we do and to see whether osteopathy is relevant, especially with regards to treating children, because that's really what we're focusing on on that day. And there's going to be the Tip FM roadcast is going to be there in the morning and there's going to be prizes and lots of talks and this, that and the other. So it's all going to be quite fun and there's going to be the opening and the unveiling of our new sensory garden created by Anna Marie um, which is in the beautiful front garden and it's really shaping up and looking great. So I just want to introduce to you just quickly what the Daisy Clinic is. The Daisy Clinic is a special clinic that I created about, it's actually in its 10th year um, And it's created around two ideas. The first is I teach paediatrics to postgraduate osteopaths and have been for 20 plus years all around, actually, in UK, Europe, Russia, etc., lots of different countries. And I do especially did a lot of and do a lot of teaching in the UK. So the Irish osteopaths would come over, fly over to the UK, as would I, to run these courses and I thought this is crazy why don't we just run something here in Ireland so 10 years ago I started this postgraduate diploma in paediatrics for osteopaths who are experienced osteopaths who have been qualified usually for quite a while and they come and do this three-year course part-time course which is set around it's very important actually when you're training in paediatrics to have clinical experience meaning real experience in treating children and especially in difficult children, i.e. children with special needs or complex cases. So I decided to set up this kind of clinic, the Daisy Clinic, with the other reason for it was I treat and we treat at the clinic many, many cases of special needs, complex cases or referrals from people like Bernardo's or referrals from doctors and paediatricians. And in the case of special needs children, the, the, there is a long-term need for care and that can be extremely expensive and for parents who need this co- constant kind of care for their children and there are an awful lot of different reasons why children will need long-term care, osteopathic care and I'll talk about that in, in a second um, but that's the reason why we started the clinic, so we could offer long-term care and at the same time train postgraduate osteopaths in paediatrics. So what I decided to do is bring a teacher over with me, so I would t- myself and one other teacher would come and teach these osteopaths, and it's a three-year course, and there's also clinic. There's clinical stuff which is done at the Daisy Clinic, which actually used to be in a community centre down in Clonmel, but now it's actually I've brought it back into my practice, and we have days where we actually learn lecture. This whole lecture weekends where they they study and they do they do written case studies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's this kind of three year diploma in paediatrics, and we've had we're on our fourth contingent contingent, you know. So we're in our tenth year here which is great. So it's a, a wonderful day, um, a big buzz about the place because of the Daisy Clinic, because there's, there's, you know, there's 10, 12 osteopaths. The interesting thing is, is a lot of the students who have qualified still come to the clinic and help out because they really like coming. So there's a wonderful kind of environment and some absolutely wonderful um, children that we see and uh, it's thoroughly enjoyed by everybody and uh, it's, it's lovely. Um, in some of these complex, difficult cases, for example, when you're looking at a child with cerebral palsy, they have ongoing needs as they go through growth. Just, in, just if you're talking about cerebral palsy, there are certain areas that need, to be, that need management. For example, because of the neuromuscular damage, 
which means the, 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 the nerve supply to the muscles that has had damage in the brain, as cerebral palsy kids grow, different parts of them can contract and be floppy. And these, con- these areas of contracture, especially in the spine, for example, can lead to things like scoliosis, a lateral curve in the spine. What we do is try and keep everybody straight, keep everything balanced, keep everything functioning. Another, another area is, is because of this contracture, it can lock up a part of their, their, their nervous system, their brainstem, and trigger seizures. So we, again, we, we're keeping everything functioning and as free as possible. And that's something you just can't do once. It's a, something that's ongoing. And, and we've been doing it with a lot of these children we've been treating for many, many years, actually. Um, Another area is in Down syndrome, where there are particular challenges with a child with Down syndrome. For example, in a very simply, ear, nose, throat, because of the straight shape and structure of their face, there's a lack of drainage and they can be very congested. And we get everything free. We get things draining. That's a very one of the most simple things that we do, but it's it can be incredibly are helpful because it can be distressing to be constantly having difficulty breathing in these children. So that's just an example and there's millions of different examples. We also treat really difficult cases that have got stuck with the system and they need more ongoing help. So that's the reason for it. And so referral to the Daisy Clinic tends to come through me or through special needs, um, if there are special needs. But we don't just take special needs children, we take children who number one can't afford it but also they have a particularly difficult areas where where they need ongoing help and support so that's the reason for it and we just want to sort of invite everyone along so everyone can have a look and see what we're doing there and uh, and almost celebrate that we've been in our 10th year of working and uh, please pop in on the 11th of September between 12.30 and 2 and come and have a chat with us there'll be lots of us here to answer questions Anyway, I hope to see you there.